Hi, it's Christina Grant again with Tencel Teaching Tidbits and Hand to Mind. It is week four, day three of third grade Hand to Mind Teach at Home math video series. Are you ready? Hi, today we're going to be problem solving with addition and subtraction in third grade. When we are problem solving with addition and subtraction, we are solving problems that are usually in word form. We know these as word problems. Sometimes they're called story problems. And we have to figure out whether to add, subtract, how to add, how to subtract, how to find the value that they're asking. When we are solving these problems, we must use our math strategies. So I'm going to go over a few math strategies that are really good for problem solving with addition and subtraction. One we talked about yesterday, it's estimating. To estimate, you're making a thoughtful guess. It's not the exact amount, but it's almost or about or close to the value. So we might be finding the sum or the difference in a word problem and we're estimating what the answer would be. We're taking an educated guess. We can round numbers or use compatible numbers to be able to estimate the sum or difference. Another strategy is mental math. Mental math is math that you do in your head. Like if my problem was 15 plus 30, I might think to myself, I know minutes, a quarter hour is 15 minutes, and I add that on top of 30 minutes, I know that that's 45 minutes. So my brain can tell me, I know 15 and 30, that's easy, it's 45. Another strategy we use a lot with addition and subtraction are open number lines, where we start with a value and then we either jump forward or backwards to find the sum or the difference by counting the hops. When we are solving addition and subtraction problems, one strategy that we love to use is standard algorithm. With standard algorithm for both addition and subtraction, you might have to regroup. You might have to use your knowledge of ones, tens, and hundreds to be able to solve by adding and subtracting. The new one we're gonna be talking about today is called a strip diagram. There's a strip diagram for addition and for subtraction. But a strip diagram is a rectangular model used to show numerical relationships. Sometimes you might have heard them be called a bar model. It can also be known as a part, part, whole and other names for this strip diagram. But what a strip diagram tells us is a lot of information. It tells us the whole. You see that with the little bracket there. You, then you see the different parts that make up the total, make up the whole. So that's why sometimes it's called part, part, whole. Or in this case that you see on this strip diagram card, it's part, 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 whole because we know you can have an infinite number of add-ins. You can also use a strip diagram with subtraction as well. As you notice, notice here, the total is at the bottom with the bracket. Then there's two parts, but one of the parts is missing. That's the subtraction part. You start with the whole, take away part to find the other part. We're going to practice strip diagrams to help us problem solve with addition and subtraction. 
Let's do this one together. Hakeem went to get treats at Summer Moon Coffee for everyone in his office building. He picked up 24 items from the coffee shop. 18 of the items were coffees and the rest were teas. How many teas did Hakeem get? Hmm. So I know for a strip diagram, I, one of the parts is the whole. I need to write a bracket. And I know what you're thinking, but wait, in those other examples, the bracket was at the bottom. You can do it either way. The bracket at the top, which is the whole, or bracket at the bottom, which is the whole. It's the same. So we're going to do the bracket at the top and we're going to put, hmm, what number are we going to put at the top? Is it 24 items and 18 items? Are we adding those numbers together to find a whole? No, we picked up 24 items. He picked up 24 items from the coffee shop. So we put 24 there. That's the total. That's how many items he got from the coffee shop. Now we need to know the parts. Well, it, our, it tells us in the problem, 18 of the items, so 18 of the 24 were coffees. So 18 is going to go here. Now for a strip diagram, we are going to draw rectangles around our parts. Now, the rectangles do play a, a big role in strip diagrams. It's not just a rectangle, cut in half, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. No, we actually have to think about how big, what the magnitude of that rectangle should be. So if I'm thinking 18, well, 18, but the whole is 24. So out of 24 items, 18 were coffee. That's kind of a lot. That's more than half because half of 24 would be 12. So I can't just draw a line in the middle because he didn't get 12 coffees. He got 18. So the benchmark of half, I'm going to go a little past half because 18 is past half. So I'm going to draw the rectangle like that. That signifies that it's a big portion of those 24 total items. Now, my next part is this rectangle here, but I don't have that number there. And that is what they're wanting me to find out. How many T's were in those items? So 18 were coffee, some were teas, and the total number was 24. Now I can use different ways to figure out what that missing part of my strip diagram is. I could use mental math if I just know my math facts. I could use standard algorithm. I can count up, I can count back. I'm going to show on an up and number line how I would solve this. So here's my note open number line. There's 18. I know I need to jump to get to 24. And I know if I count up from 18 to 24, there are six hops in between 18 and 24. So I know the missing part of my strip diagram is six. So 18 and 6 make 24. Also, 6 and 18 make 24. Hmm, this is reminding me a lot of related facts and fact families. So if I could even say 24 minus 18 is 6, or 24 minus 6 is 18. So strip diagrams work together a lot with related facts and fact families. Let's try another one. Here's a problem. Allison ate 66 chips in one sitting. The next day, she ate another 75 chips. 
How many chips did Allison eat in all? Create a strip diagram and solve. Wow, they're using some terminology there. In all, I already know that that is addition. When they're saying in all, all together, it's addition. So I already know my two parts, 66 and 75. Notice how 66 is a smaller rectangle than 75. Now for my whole, the bracket. The bracket signifies what is the total, the whole number, the entire part of that rectangle. Now, that we don't know yet. That's what we're trying to solve for. We know she ate 66 chips and 75 chips. We just don't know what the total was. So to find that out, I think I'm going to use standard algorithm written in the vertical way. So here's 66 plus 75. I know I need to do the ones place first. So six and five is 11. I know I can't write 11 at the bottom because 11 means there's one group of 10 and one one. So I'm gonna put the one one there and I'm going to put the group of 10 with the other tens there. Now I know I can add one 10 plus six tens plus seven tens, which actually makes 14 tens or one group of 100, four tens. Now my total number is 141. So I can write that on top of my strip diagram. Allison ate 141 chips altogether. Let's do another one. Abby planted 340 bushes. If she planted 160 bushes on Saturday, how many bushes did she plant on Sunday? Create a strip diagram and solve. Well, do I know the total or am I finding the total? Let's look again. Abby planted 340 bushes. If she planted 160 bushes on Saturday, how many bushes did she plant on Sunday? Hmm, so they're trying to say Saturday and Sunday, those two are the parts, and one, the whole, is 340. So here's my bracket, and I'm going to draw my strip diagram, the two parts. My whole is 340. How many bushes did she plant on Saturday? Well, she planted 160. Now, 160 is a smaller rectangle than the other part because I know that the benchmark of 34, I'm sorry, of 340 would be right around, hmm, 340 and divided by two, well, I'm thinking 34. Do I know half of 34? I know that's 17. So 340, that would make 170. So halfway would be 170. 160 is not half yet. It's not 170. So that's why I'm drawing my rectangle like that. Now, how many did she plant on Sunday? Well, we don't know that answer yet. So we're going to need to figure out how many she did if the total number of bushes were 340. So let's write that out. 340 minus 160. Well, I know zero ones minus zero ones is zero. Four tens minus six tens. Well, I'm going to need some help. I need a few tens to be able to take away six tens. So I'm going to go ahead and cross out and get one group of tens from the hundred. I'm going to get 10 tens from the hundred. So here's 
10 tens and four and four tens. So I'm going to actually be able to use this now to be able to take away six. So I know 14 minus six is eight. And then 200 minus 100 is 100. So I know 180 would be how many plants she planted on Sunday. For more information, more resources, and of course, some skill practice pages to practice problem solving with addition and subtraction, please visit handtomindathome.com. Thank you so much.